they cross. In the previous video, we have been discussing the characteristics and the characteristics of the five elements. In this video, we are going to continue the discussion on the five elements. We are going to focus on the relationship between different elements. Whenever we talk about Chinese medicine or acupuncture, people always say about the balance, the balance of yin and yang, the balance of human body. It is true that the balance is very important on human health, but the balance is very important not only on human health, it is also very important in the nature. So in this video, we are going to introduce how to balance how the, na how the nature maintain the balance of everything. There are two, two main relationships between different elements, generating, generating and controlling. The generating and controlling is the normal relationship. If it becomes disease or abnormal relationship, as a logical conditions, because overacting or insulting and insulting. So the normal situation is generating and controlling. This relationship, the, gener the generating and controlling, happens in all normal activities, all normal systems. Overacting and insulting only happens in pathological conditions. And at last, we're going to talk about the relationship between the mother and the child elements. The generating refers to an orderly relationship of the wood, fire, earth, metal, and water, where one element promotes and benefits another. It is very important from, from this definition that the relationship among these elements they have an order. This order cannot be changed. The wood, the wood can generate the fire. The fire can generate the earth. The earth can generate the metal. The metal can generate the water. The water can generate the wood. The, the order is very important, which means if you change the order, it doesn't make sense in this theory. For example, we said the wood can generate the fire the wood cannot generate the earth because that's not in order. The order is the fire can generate the earth. How do we know the relationship, especially in the past? Why they have this relationship? This is actually the, the ancestor where they see the phenomena in the world. For example, you, you use the wood to light the fire. The fire is from the wood. After you burn the wood, the ashes, after years, it becomes the soil, that's the earth. The metal, the, all the minerals, they come from the unearth, from the underground. So they think that the earth can generate the metal. In the early, mor in, in the early morning, you can see that the water comes out of the, the metal or on the surface of the metal. So people will, when, when they see this phenomenon, they think that the water is from the metal. Water can benefit the wood. That's why we need to water the, your garden. So this is all the phenomena, that's the, all the phenomena that you can see in the nature. And then we summarize these principles into the five elements. This is the generating. The controlling refers to an orderly relationship of the restraint and restriction of the wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. This is another relationship of restraint and restriction. So for, from the generating that promotes, supports, and benefits, controlling, restrain, and restrict. The wood control the, the, the earth, the earth control the water, the water control the fire, the fire control the metal, the metal control the wood. So when you link everything together, it becomes like a star. This relationship 
You also can see from nature. For example, if something on fire, you can to use the water to control the fire. The metal, if you want to transform the the shape of the metal, you can to put the metal on the fire, melt the metal. The metal. When you use it as a tool, when you fix your garden, you're going to use the tool. The tool is made of made of the from the metal. So the metal can control the wood. If the tree grows too many branches, you're going to use the metal, the tool, to cut the branches off to control the wood. The wood to control the earth. There, there was once that's when I planted the the flower in a in a pot. After after a year, after a long time, when the the flower died, I take the flower flower out. I realize that for a very small flower with a lot of soil, and then after one year's grow, it, there were not much soil. Instead, it become a lot of roots. So from this phenomena, we. We think that the wood will control the earth. The wood, the plants will control the soil. So these are something you can see from the nature. The earth control the water, flooding. The flooding, what you're going to do, you can you can use the earth to control the water. So as you can see, these relationship are actually something from nature. Something we can see from the nature. This is this is the law of the nature. Generating and controlling. When you see them together, the wood generate the fire. The fire generate the earth. The earth generate the metal. The metal generate water. And um, when you see these two together, why in the nature we need generating and controlling? The reason is because if the wood generate the fire, the fire generated the earth. We may have excess fire or excess earth, too much, too much earth. So in this way, the wood need to control the earth. Once the earth can be controlled, and then the fire will be controlled. We're going to discuss the relationship between two different elements, how they control, how how to ba how to balance how this is the from generating and controlling. If you got too much fire, the water need to control the fire. So that's controlling. This is the common law in the nature. However, in some situation the balance of generating and controlling will be damaged. Once it damaged, it becomes the pathological conditions. In that condition, we use another term. Overacting and insulting. Overacting refers to the excessive restriction or restraint of one of the elements. Normally, the wood will control the earth. In some situation, if the, the wood control the earth too much, then we got overacting. So the wood overacts the earth. In this condition, it will cause the pathological changes. The earth, if controlled too much on the water, becomes overacts. The water overacts the fire, fire overacts the metal, the metal overacts the wood. This relationship Apart from the theory, you also can see from the from our society. For example, the the last one, the insulting. The insulting refers to the reverse rejection and restraint of one element. Normally, the wood need to control the the earth. However, if the earth control the wood, we call it insult. So we don't use the the term control. We use the insult. The reason why the 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 overacting and insulting the reason why, for example, the the wood overacts on the earth, 
there are two reasons. Firstly, it may be the excess of wood, so the wood becomes too strong. The earth is very weak, so the wood will overact on the earth. The second is the wood is normal, but the earth is very weak, which means the wood is relatively excess compared with the earth. This also can result in the wood overact on the earth. In salting, we use the term in salt. In salt. Why we don't always use these kinds of terms? Because from when you see from the generating, the wood generate the fire, the fire generate the, the earth. So in our society, the grandparents generate the, your parents. Your parents raise you up as kids. Normally, your grandparents can control you. The grandparents can control the grandkids. The grandkids, especially when they were young, they should listen to the grandparents. However, if the grandparents, the, the grandkids, control the grandparents, then we call it insult because that's, the, that's not the normal way. So that's the, the relationship in the social society, that the social environments you can see. That's very similar. The reason why we mentioned the, the parents and child, grandparents, you see in the next slides, when we talk about the relationship between the mother child and the the, the mother elements and the child elements, we use this this way, this ex ex explanations. The relationship between the mother and child elements. In order to discuss the mother and child elements, we need to understand what's mother and child elements. The mother and child elements we see from the generating order. When some one elements generate another element because the one is mother, the mother generates the sound. For example, the wood generates the fire. So in this situation, we said that the, the wood is the mother element, the fire is the sound element. Similarly, the earth generates the metal. We said that the earth is the mother element. The metal is the sound element. These two elements, when we see together the mother and son, the impairments of the mother elements due to the child elements, the impairments of the child elements due to the mother elements, that's the main impairment. For example, if the mother is very weak, it will cause the the child is weak. In this situation, we can see from, for example, the, the, the mother, the body constitution is very weak. The child also will have a poor body constitution. From another point of view, you also can see from, for example, from the society, from the social environment. In one family, if the mother is quite, Poor, the kids, most of the time also will be poor. So that's the, the that's the weakness of the parents. The weakness of the mother results in the weakness of the the son or the kids. In this situation, in future when we study the sangfu organs, we can apply the organs in these categories. For example. The liver, the wood, will affect the, the heart. The liver will affect the earth, the spleen. The impairment of the mother element due to the trial element. So in this situation, the impairment is mainly focused on the mother. Because the imbalance of the mother elements. There are three situations. The first one, if the, the, 
child is excess is very strong it will result in the mother is very strong as well so in this situation it, you can just imagine that the son is very wealthy the son will support the mother and be, make the mother become wealthy in this situation but the in, when we talk about the impairments it means that the sun is excess, although in a society we will never be excess wealthy. That excess well excess sun elements will cause the excess mother elements. For example, someone in one situation, a patient suffer from the heart fire, excess fire will cause the liver fire. So that's from the heart to the liver. Another situation is the weakness of the sun. The weakness of the sun elements cause the weakness of the mother elements. Again, from the family, the sun is very poor, and then the mother needs to support the sun. However, this mother is not that wealthy. We make the, the, the mother poor because the mother needs to share her income with the son. So in this situation, it will, will result in both of the mother and the son elements poor. So that also will result in the impairment of the mother. The last one is because the son elements steal the mother elements. In this situation, the son steal the money for the mother. So the son become wealthy, but the mother become weak. So as you can see here, the, from the examples, we got three impairments. When we talk about the relationship between the mother and the son elements, we focus on the impairments of the mother or the impairments of the child. When we talk about the impairment of the if, when we focus on the impairments of the child elements, we focus on the, the, the cause due to the mother elements. This impairment of the trial elements is due to the weakness of the mother elements. The mother is a very weak cause, the results in the child is very weak. When we focus on the impairment of the mother elements, there are three situations. The strong child make the excess mother so cause excess excess situation of both elements the second the weak son elements cause the weakness of the mother elements in this situation it will result in the weakness of both mother and son elements the last situation the excess sun elements or the trial elements results in will cause the weakness of the mother. So in this situation, one is weak, one is excess, one is deficient. Excess key child, the deficient mother. So these are the different relationship between different elements. All these laws, these principles, we can apply in our practice when we see different organs. We can apply the liver. So when we talk about the relationship between the liver and the heart, the liver and the kidney, or the liver and, spleen, and the spleen, we can use these kinds of relationship. As you can see, that's the relationships of the five elements are quite complicated, and it is actually more complicated than the yin and yang theory. Because in the yin and yang theory, we got two objects, and then in the five elements, we need to discuss with the five objects at the same time. All what you need to do just to practice Choose two of the elements and think about the relationship, what kinds of relationship they have, and think about the nature. Can you find any similar situation 
that can represent the five elements. In order to remember the five elements better, there's one thing you can do. When you see the video, you will see, especially from the traditional Kung Fu movie, you will see sometimes the, the actors, they count their fingers, what they were counting, for example. Here. When he was counting, what he was counting? So he was counting the five elements. He want to use the five elements to predict what's going, what's going to happen. So how he counts? He put a, the wood in this joint. The fire on the tip of the index finger, the earth on the tip of your ring finger, metal, the joints, the water, the joints. So when you place these five elements on your hand, you can come easily from wood, fire, that's generating. When you count for the control, controlling, you skip one, the earth to the water, water, water to fire, fire to metal. So you can come from your fingers. Why you skip the middle finger is because we got two fire in our body. In future, we will talk about the fire of the heart, the fire in the kidney. So we got the minister fires. So that's why we skip one fire. So you also may practice on your hand. And then you can think about the relation in future. You, you may think about the relationship of different organs. The liver, the heart, the spleen, the lung and the kidney. What's the relationship between the kidney and the heart? That's controlling. The water can generate the, the kidney can generate the, the liver, the liver can generate the, the heart. However, the kidney will control the heart. So these are the re different relationships among different organs. In this video, we have discussed the relationship among the five elements. In the next video, we are going to explain the applications of the, the five elements theory in Chinese medicine. Thank you for your attention.